In the final weeks of World War II, Allied forces were advancing into Germany, where they encountered the concentration camps set up by the Nazi regime. They were shocked at the state of the thousands of survivors they found and the conditions they had been living in. Starving and diseased, they were packed into filthy huts or left out to die in the open after their guards had fled. Desperate to help these skeletal figures, Allied soldiers fed them any rations they had, only for many of the prisoners who had survived starvation for so long to drop dead suddenly a few days after their liberation. It was as if they had eaten themselves to death, as if their starving bodies were overwhelmed by the newly abundant food. This was refeeding syndrome. I'm Dr. Park, and this is Worst Ways to Die. Refeeding syndrome is the term given to the rapid fall in essential body electrolytes that can occur when a previously starved person starts to eat again. It happens when refeeding upsets the delicate balance in hormones, minerals and electrolytes the body had to strike to adapt to starvation. Electrolytes such as phosphate, potassium and magnesium have a wide array of functions as fuel and currency in intracellular processes, and a sharp reduction in the availability of these electrolytes can have catastrophic consequences for the body. Sudden death can occur within days of refeeding, as was witnessed in survivors of Nazi concentration camps and the survivors of the Dutch famine in the winter of 1944-45. The first studies into this condition took place on the other side of the world, in the Philippines in the final months of World War II, where American forces were rounding up Japanese soldiers who had fled into the jungle and who had gone without adequate food for months. While refeeding syndrome as a medical condition was only discovered in the 20th century, the phenomenon may have been described as early as the 5th century BC by no other than Hippocrates himself, the ancient Greek father of medicine. The Jewish Roman historian Josephus also seems to note it in survivors of the siege of Jerusalem in 70 AD. The condition today is mainly seen in frail hospital inpatients and in sufferers of anorexia nervosa whose nutritional needs and electrolyte levels need to be monitored closely when building up to a normal diet after months of self-starvation. But how does refeeding syndrome occur? Well, I'm afraid, dear viewer, you're going to have to endure some back-of-a-fag packet physiology from me for the next few minutes. The main fuel for all processes that go on in the body is glucose, and the body needs to maintain a certain level of glucose in the bloodstream in order to survive. In normal conditions, the body obtains glucose primarily from staple carbohydrates like bread, rice, potatoes. Ingested carbohydrates and sugars are broken down into glucose, and this influx of glucose is detected by the body, which causes it to secrete the hormone insulin. Insulin encourages the absorption of glucose into cells, and also encourages the storage of glucose in the form of glycogen for short-term use and as fat for long-term storage. When the body is in a starvation state, in the case of a concentration camp inmate or an anorexic teenager, the body is receiving less energy than it's spending. Short-term glucose stores, only last as little as 24 hours, and after this time the body has to adapt in order to obtain energy from other sources. Fat stores are utilised first, and some of us have more of these than others, sadly. But once these are depleted, the body has to start breaking down muscle, as protein is the only remaining stored energy source within the muscle fibres. During starvation, the intake of vital minerals and electrolytes is also reduced, and to maintain a normal level of these in the bloodstream, these electrolytes are sucked out of the body's cells. So, while while the levels of potassium, magnesium and phosphate in the blood may appear normal, the total amount in the body as a whole is low. This is the state in which starvation victims can survive for numerous weeks. When the starved person tries to feed normally again, the body's usual processes try to kick in again as if nothing had happened. The body receives an influx of sweet, sweet glucose and releases insulin once more to make use of it. As well as its effect on glucose, the insulin now in the bloodstream causes potassium magnesium and phosphate ions to be hoovered up by the body cells which had, in the starvation state, been depleted of these electrolytes. However, this now means that the blood levels of these ions drop rapidly, and other organs end up being deprived of these vital electrolytes, causing the symptoms of refeeding syndrome. These symptoms are varied, unpredictable, and can occur without warning. Low phosphate levels, big science word for this is hypophosphatemia, is the most prominent feature of refeeding syndrome. Lack of phosphate impairs the ability of cells to process glucose into energy, and thereby making these cells dysfunction. And these dysfunctional cells can manifest themselves in a wide variety of symptoms. Hypophosphatemia can cause muscle cells to break down or become dysfunctional in general, causing muscle weakness. The heart itself is, of course, a muscle, and if the cardiac muscle function is impaired, big word for this is cardiomyopathy, the heart's ability to pump blood around the body will be reduced and ultimately result in heart failure. 
unexplained sudden heart failure was one of the first manifestations of refeeding syndrome noted by the doctors who treated concentration camp survivors. Respiratory failure can also occur because the chest muscles aren't able to contract to properly inflate the lungs. The remains of destroyed muscle cells can also damage the kidneys, as can an overall imbalance in phosphate ions in the blood. Dysfunctional nerves and brain cells can lead to pins and needles, confusion and seizures. Lack of phosphate can also affect blood cells, destroying the oxygen-carrying red blood cells and also reducing the ability of the blood to clot. Potassium is another electrolyte that can be severely depleted in refeeding syndrome and functions at the cell membranes helping other molecules and ions to pass through the membrane. Potassium deficiency can cause abnormalities in how electricity is conducted through the heart cells, leading to irregular heart rhythms and even cardiac arrest. It can cause vomiting and diarrhea, or conversely, lead to the intestinal muscles to become paralyzed and this can cause constipation. Reduced magnesium levels in refeeding syndrome can also cause irregular heart rhythms, as well as affect the nervous system, causing tremor, weakness, confusion and seizures. Despite not knowing exactly how or why starvation victims were suddenly dying after receiving an abundance of food, doctors recognised early on that preventing patients from refeeding too quickly was the key to preventing these deaths. And while it seemed cruel to the untrained eye to limit the survivors' food intake any longer, slow refeeding allowed the body more time to balance the levels of electrolytes without causing large shifts of ions between the bloodstream and cells. Today, we prevent refeeding syndrome by replacing phosphate, potassium and magnesium through tablets or through intravenous solutions. This is done alongside carefully monitored nutrition, with patients initially only being fed 6 to 800 calories per day before increasing this over the course of a week or so. The patients that I have treated who have been deemed at risk of refeeding syndrome have mostly been elderly patients who required intravenous feeding due to malnutrition or to swallowing problems, but we also tragically had an anorexic university university student who for the past several weeks had been surviving on just one packet of crisps a day. For more worst ways to die, check out my video on the Black Death and the gruesome ways it wiped out millions of people in the Middle Ages.